Hello everybody and welcome to Quest for Creative, episode 16. Yes, I actually looked before I started this episode and we are on episode 16. Yay. Today we have a really interesting episode scheduled, but first, I need new armor. I've got 30 levels, so I may as well enchant something cool. So let's do this. All right, let's... Make us some pants. Bloop. Eh, looks good. Projectile protection and last stand. I still have no idea what last stand does. I really, really don't. Uh, but now I, I need new boots. I have diamond boots, but I have no levels. Ah, oh, well, it's off to the grinder for me. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I've, I've got a trick up my sleeve that I thought was really interesting when I first found it. This is a couple of tanks full of liquid XP, uh, approximately 141 levels worth of liquid XP if you get them all at once. Uh, if you do 1 to 30, 1 to 30, 1 to 30, I have no idea how many times you can do that on here. But yeah, uh, the idea is that this giant tank, which for the record goes down that far, six blocks deep, uh, is connected to this tank. So I can just right-click on this tank and get levels. And uh, to fill it, I just stand on the XP drain there. But there's an interesting thing I figured out. Walked over the XP drain, right-click. I have 31 levels now. Okay, now look at the tank. That That's the top blocks. So you'll get different numbers. Uh, I mean, 15,976 out of 16,000. If I stand over this, these tanks are as full as they're going to get. And I'm still standing on the drain with 30 levels. So let's wander back over to our enchanting table. And if I'd have known that uh, this little glitch was going to come up, I would have put the enchanting table closer over there. But I didn't even know I was going to put the tank over there until I actually did it today. Uh, that one looks good. Projectile protection, unbreaking three, and last stand two. Still no idea what last stand two does, but then again, the last time I said that, you were here and you know everything I know since then. All right, so now we are back down to not 31 levels. Woo. Bloop. Walk back over the drain. Right click, 31 levels again. <laughs> And I did this, I've done, I tested this several, several times today, just making sure that it's a continuous little glitch, something that I can replicate, and something that I can show you guys how to make. Bloop. Uh, blast protection, there we go. I might have to uh, combine my enchants. Yeah, I started out today, I had, uh, you know, nine plus, uh, what would that be? That would be five. So that many books, 14 books. I enchanted all of these in the past half hour while I was trying to figure out exactly why it was doing what it was doing. And I find that qu I find it quite interesting. But I can show you how to do it. Wee. And I am going to sleep really quick. I put a bed out here just for ease of access. Bloop. And I love the Tinker's bed because it actually looks like you're under the blankets. Yay. All right, so what you will need to do this glitch, to take advantage of this glitch, you will need, where did I put those? You will need two tanks, at least two tanks from open blocks. The XP drain, which is actually, I mean, this is all relatively simple stuff. Uh, a couple obsidian, glass panes, and then XP drain um, R is just a whole bunch of iron bars. You know, nothing major. Then what you need is enough uh, essence berries to get 30 levels twice. Okay, and there's a reason for that. So what you do is you get out a whole bunch of XP berries. And if I remember correctly, three will get me from 0 to 60. No, 0 to 30. So let's get another three. Yeah, I decided to use a deep storage unit. Thank you, Space Gator, for that suggestion. Uh, I didn't think of this, 
I knew it existed, but I didn't think of it. I just had a locker completely full and things were just randomly disappearing from the item docks. No idea why. Uh, but I put it in a deep storage unit. And then while I was fiddling around trying to figure out all this crap, I went from like 3,000 to what you see now. So I kind of went nuts with the ore berries. All right, so let's take our tank, put our tanks down, XP drain on top of it, and then we get up to level 30. Now, you could probably do this just by grinding and all that fun stuff. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Okay, a little over a stack got me from level 1 to level 30. And then we stand on the drain. Oh, and now I have 39. What the hell? <laughs> but I'm going to drain out completely. Like I said, you could probably do this from a whole bunch of different sources. Oh, I know what I'll do. This will be entertaining. Drain out completely. Oh, we're completely full. Okay, apparently I need more than two tanks. Let's put down a third tank. And that should be enough to get us down to nothing. All right. Then we go up and level up to level 30 again. And I'm just going to do this with the essence berries. I could do it with the grinder. I could probably do it with uh, that tank over there. There we go. All right. So let's put the ore berry back. Let's just straight up push put the ore berries away. That way we're not getting any confu that way we're not getting confused by anything. So we'll just put the ore berries away. Then we wander over to our enchanting table. Up to our enchanting table. Long distance away. Like I said, I would have put it closer. We enchant something at level 30. So we get our fire protection four. That's cool. I'm going to need a bigger chest. I'm going to need a f better way to store those books. Some kind of organized way. Probably involving bibliocraft bookshelves. All right. So now we have less than one level. All right. So we jump on our XP drain. Whoop, and we already have up to 30 levels. Or we had our 30 levels. <laughs> And we actually have more XP in the tank than we actually started with. And it's a little weird how that works. Um, it is a bit strange how that works. Um, all right, so if I stand here, look at the bar. We're halfway between the sec second to last, or we're halfway through the second to last like little section of the experience bar. And I just keep right clicking. Basically, I'm picking up a level and dropping it. And I'm going ever so slightly higher. And yeah, so this tank is completely full now, as, t as full as it will go. So it's open blocks EXP is a little glitchy. Okay. It's a bit weird. But you can just use these glitches to enchant the hell out of everything. I mean, I enchanted armor. I tested that with my new chess piece here, which obviously I've taken a hit from it. I don't know from what. I think I might have landed on one of the cactuses at one point. Cacti. Uh, but that's about it. Um, and you just saw me do it right there. It is really simple. You get 30 levels. You put 30 levels in a tank using the XP drain. You get 30 more levels, then you go enchant something, you come back, you jump on the drain, you get your 30 levels. I don't understand. I really don't. <laughs> uh, well, it's a glitch, so um, yeah. All right, second thing, second really, really interesting thing we're going to look at today. As you can see, I've been playing with Galacticraft uh, because I figured out something really interesting. Okay, so... I, ha I have these tree farms here, these, this setup here, to produce power. Okay, so I produce, you know, power. It powers the hardened cell, or energizes the hardened energy cells and powers the lava fabricator, which gives me the lava, which runs my emerald farm. Okay, 
Well, I figured out an interesting little thing that I didn't know was a thing, and that is that these aluminum wires will connect to the energy conduits. And then you can power things, for, uh, like, like, like I can get power for Galacticraft from the steam dynamos, or if I really, really wanted to, I could use the coal generators from Galacticraft to power, uh, like all the, the, the RF stuff, like the lava fabricator there. And so that got me thinking. I'm like, well, Galacticraft has infinite sources of power. And it does, too. And they're right here. The solar panels. I mean, they just pull power from light. So I'm like, oh, well, there's a great idea. I'll just, you know, plunk down a whole bunch of solar panels. Uh, let's get some heavy aluminum wire. I, need, I still need more aluminum wire. Uh, I've expanded my... Uh, cotton farm greatly because I just keep running out of cotton. I need more wool. Lots and lots more wool. Um, yeah, so uh, we take our advanced solar panels. Let's get out some power. So I got a redstone energy cell here. And then just, I mean, it's quite literally as simple as one would expect. You plunk down the solar panel. You connect up the power. And then you plunk down the energy cell and, well, once we enable the solar panel, I mean, we're getting power. And we are cruising through the power, too. I mean, I would have no idea how fast that's going. Um, I would need that thermal expansion. Uh, boop. I would need a multimeter. Let's see. How hard are these to make? Copper, lead, redstone conductance coil, and an electrum gear. I have time. All right, let's see. Electrum gear. Do I have? I do. And then a what now? Redstone conductance coil. Now, you got to be careful. I, I can hardly tell the difference between the redstone conductance coil and the redstone reception coil. They look the same to me. I mean, side by side, I can tell the Keller difference, but uh, if I just saw one by the Keller, I wouldn't know. And then I need copper and lead. Just two copper and two lead. Well, I got plenty of that stuff. Two copper, two lead. And then let's make one of these guys. So now we have a multimeter. And if I take the redstone energy conduit. Now, will the energy conduits connect directly? Yes, they will. But we are not gaining power. Why not? Possibly because this thing's not smart enough to output to this guy. All righty. Uh, there we go. So let's shrink you, get rid of you, get rid of you. Put down the heavily aluminum wire. Put down a redstone energy conduit. And then put down our uh, energy cell. So we're getting power. We're getting power at what looks like a thousand EU per tick, actually, which is significantly faster than what it was before. Over 20 ticks, I'm getting 350,126 RF. I know I said EU, but yeah. Um, there are some interesting things going on here, which is kind of actually how I discovered this next little thing that I'm going to show you, I was looking up, well, actually, yeah, I was, let's just tell the story. I was looking up how to produce large amounts of power in the Attack of the B Team mod pack because I knew, come on, the sun is set. Thank you. I knew that one of the things that I plan on doing in a future episode, probably the next episode, is going to require ridiculous amounts of power. Now, I have checked all three of these. The uh, steam dynamo, the magmatic dynamo, the compression dynamo, and the reactant dynamo all output 80 RF per tick. I would think that, you know, the steam dynamo, dynamo would output less 
than the reactant dynamo. But no, they all output 80 RF per tick maximum. And I knew I was going to need more power than that. So I was trying to figure out another way to output asinine levels of power. And that's when I figured out that the, that the aluminum wires can connect to the energy conduits. And that's how I figured out that we can do this. Now, in that video that I found, I was, I, I, it was a video about getting infinite power, infinite RF from these redstone energy cells. Now, I did it with the redstone energy cells in my test world, and I did it with the resonant energy cells as well. Uh, you, so you could probably do it with the leadstone and the hardened energy cells. Not 100% sure. Didn't test it. Probably can't. So what you got to do, you got to get a redstone energy cell with at least 2,000 RF in it. Okay. And uh, if you're using a resonant energy cell, you got to have at least 10,000 RF because it outputs 10,000. Uh, so probably the hardened is at least 400 and the leadstone is at least 80 RF in the system already. So a little bump from a steam dynamo or, well, <laughs> the solar panels probably will get you where you need to go. All right, so then we take our energy conduits. Now keep in mind the redstone energy conduit can only support 10,000 RF per tick. Now that'll be useful later on. Uh, not right now because this thing only outputs 2,000 RF per tick, but if you use the resonant, it outputs 10,000 RF per tick. Really useful when you get that far. Anyway, so let's put one there, one there. And what we got to do is we got to set the front of this thing as an output. So it's got to be that orangish color, not the blue or the, I guess that's a yellowish golden color. I don't know. Color blind here. So front output, side input. Okay, so that's what we need it to look like. And then we take our heavy aluminum wire and sit it down there. All right. And look how fast we're pulling in RF. Just ridiculous speeds. Then we take another redstone energy conduit, plunk it down here. And we need another energy cell, which I have a bunch of. So we have the redstone energy cell here. Plunk. And then we plunk it down there and look how fast we're pulling stuff in. This one is not outputting anything. It's still got 10 million RF. This guy, he's already up to 50 million or 50, no, 500,000 RF. And if we use our voltmeter or our multimeter, 12,000 RF per tick. And that's the average distribution over 20 ticks. So it's a little goofy. But what it looks like is actually happening uh, is, one, we're breaking this. We're breaking the multimeter. And two, we're getting about 2,000 RF per tick, which would fit because this outputs 2,000 RF per tick. So something, a combination between the redstone energy conduits, the heavy aluminum wire, and the output and input of the energy cells gives us infinite power at the speed that the energy cell can output. So if we have the like the redstone energy cell outputs at 2,000 RF per tick, so that's how much power we're getting outputted. Uh, the hardened energy cell, 400 RF, so that's how much we would get. The resonant energy cell, 10,000 RF per tick, so that's how much power we would get. And that's why I pointed out that the redstone energy conduit, the most powerful energy conduit that you can get, can only support 10,000 RF per tick. So if you have, say, two of these resonant or the two of the resonant energy cells plugged in at once into one line, you will only get one resonant energy cell outputting. Whew. Now, I would actually be doing this with the resonant energy cells, but to do that, I need the redstone energy cells, which I have, and the enderum ingots, which I don't, because I need, one, the pyrothium dust, 
which I would need, pulverized coal, which coal, which I have, redstone, which I have, blaze powder, which I have, and sulfur, which I don't, because you gotta take the pulverizer and output. You know, you you gotta do the nether stuff. Oh, cool! I didn't know that. You can get sulfur from coal. And the blaze rods output four blaze powder. Ooh, I didn't know that. I'm curious. Can I fake this? Let's see, blaze powder. No, I cannot. All right, never mind. Uh, you. Doop. There was a trick you could do back in one of the older mod packs, uh, what, uh, like FTB mod packs, where you could take two blaze powder and turn them into a blaze rod, run them through an uh, Industrial Craft 2's macerator, get five blaze powder out of it, and then just loop it and get infinite blaze rods. Apparently you can't do that here because you can't turn the blaze powder into blaze rods, but hmm, almost. Well, holy crap, I mean, this is insanity. That is insanity. Uh, but yeah, so I would be doing it with the resonant energy cells to show off, but I can't make the resonant energy cells because not only do I need the pyrotheum dust, I need the enderum blend, which yes, okay, I can get tin. And I can, Well, I can't get shiny metal because I don't have any shiny metal. And I can't, you know, we need obviously an ass load of ender pearls and you know what that that i could gather that stuff but it, it would take me another day to gather that stuff so yeah mm. and in case you're curious because i sure as hell was you can leave this system running log out and unload the chunks log back in and this system will still be outputting the same exact amount of power but once you do it don't futz with it because it gets goofy. Also, you can do this. Okay, so the advanced solar panel is uh, disconnected. Well, let's see. Uh, let us expand this. Uh, let's get another resonant energy cell. Or no, uh, whatever energy cells I'm using. The redstone energy cells. Plop. Plunk that down there. And then... No, if I remember correctly, we got to do this first. We have to put the energy conduits down and then the aluminum wire down. So we're still getting a whole bunch of power. This thing's not losing any. And this thing's not losing any. And this works if this one is also drawing power. So if I grab an another one, this is why I made a whole ton of them. Let's get rid of you real quick. Put you down. So he's pulling in at about 2,000 RF per tick. He's pulling in at about 2,000 RF per tick. This guy is outputting nothing. <laughs> and we have no inputs whatsoever. This, this doesn't even have to be there anymore. So, yeah. Um, I love this little glitch. And yeah, you can have some serious fun with it. I actually had this set up on my creative world, which you know what? I'll just disconnect. No, disconnect. And I'll show you because that's easier to than just rebuilding it because I don't have all the parts needed. I was going to show you how to build it, but I don't have all the parts needed. And I want to get this video recorded before I have to go back out. That guy right there. All right. So I have eight resonant energy cells connected to one resonant energy cell. So you need eight resonant energy cells, four heavy aluminum wires, and a whole bunch of the redstone energy conduits, and then a way to output them. Because like I said, the redstone energy conduits can only support 10,000 RF per tick, and these guys will output 10,000 RF per tick. So what I did, I just connected them to a tesseract, and then anything I'm using the power for will connect directly to the Tesseract. Or I could split the power from the Tesseract and, uh, yeah, just have all the power I need. And this works, too. Um, 
right now, this is what I have running, which I'm not going to show on camera right now. That's the next episode is pulling power, which is why these two resonant energy cells are lower than they should be because they're actually outputting as fast as they're inputting. But like I said, that's for another episode. So let us get out of here before I accidentally show something I don't want to show. Yes, the IP address of my server is called Death Star. I love it. Leave me alone. <laughs> so let's sleep real quick. So I think we had a pretty good episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it because I enjoyed the hell out of recording it. I'll tell you that much. I enjoyed the hell out of making this. Um, I mean, this is not where the system's going to be. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to take my 32 advanced solar panels and possibly more once I actually get the parts together to make them and fill up this entire area for power because this has to be a glitch. Uh, this can't not be a glitch. Ooh. Okay, we're getting power here, but this one is glitched, which I believe if I do that and do that, it fixes it? No. Hmm. It's a glitch. Like I said, these things are a little hard to predict, so you got to be careful when you fiddle with these things. Yeah, there we go. Uh, what you got to do, you got to put down the redstone energy cell first, then the redstone energy conduit, then you connect it all with the heavily aluminum wire. I found that if you do it in order, if you start here, put these two down, then that, then that, then that, it doesn't work. It'll work over here, the first one, but it won't work on the second one. Like I said, it's a glitch. It's weird, uh, which is why I don't intend on actually powering my system off of it. But I do intend on abusing the hell out of the fact that the advanced solar panels can connect to the RF systems, plural, and that the advanced solar panels output a significant amount of power. Um, which, now that I think about it, might be taking advantage of that same exact glitch, but the advanced solar panels, even when they seem to be working like they're supposed to work, seem to output a significant amount more power than any of these dynamos. So one solar panel will outpower a dynamo. 32 solar panels? Holy crap. So I'm going to have some fun with that. Plus, that makes these farms worthless. Completely worthless. Uh, outside of something like that over there, which is the only farm that's actually running at the moment, because I want the dyes. Uh, which I did, ju I just plunked these guys, the 16 lockers down, and I'm using ducts because I haven't made the parts necessary to make the redstone pipes yet, or the project red pipes yet. Um, I have the parts to do it now, I just haven't done it yet. You know, time. I'm still in the middle of a huge migration. I th There has been a delay in my migration, which is why I'm taking the... Uh, taking the time now to record this episode. Uh, God only knows what's going to happen tomorrow. A delay today means more work tomorrow. I know that for a fact. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. You guys got infinite XP. You guys got infinite power. And something that I'm not 100% sure many people know about. The Galacticraft core power systems connect to the... Uh, th or thermal expansion power systems, which also connect to the Minecraft Mine Factory Reloaded power systems. Who I wonder what else is in here that connects in ways that I have not even realized yet. Of course, that's part of what I'm doing here. That is what I'm doing here: putting things together in ways that the mod developers didn't expect, and abusing the hell out of it. So I will see you guys in the next episode, and as always. Keep playing the game and have fun.